care about investing in and caring. And I, I'm just the universe. <laughs> so we'll just have fun with the universe for the, for the next hour. And I was asked to give this talk on this title, Top 10 Things to Know About the Universe. People like countdown stories, and that's what this is. But one thing you should know before anything else is that next spring, Cosmos is real and it's coming back, spring 2011. So, uh, watch that space. Also, sometimes talks like this are just loosely veiled commercials for a book somebody's trying to sell you, and just not really an exception to that. <laughs> oh, actually, um, I just want to highlight something for you. Uh, this book, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry, came out last year, and a month ago I published this book, Accessory to War, the Unspoken Alliance between Astrophysics and the Military. It happened to come out like when Trump announced Space Force, and so <laughs> that's what, but that's not what's interesting here. What's interesting is that both books, this month, earlier this month, were on the New York Times bestseller list. So it's two science, so even if I didn't write them, I'm just saying, if any science book lands anywhere on anybody's list for any length of time, we celebrate in the sciences, because hardly anybody reads science. But to have two there, for me, gave me some sense of hope that rational thinking may be in the future of the world. And if you look, um, that was the first week Accessory at War was on the list, but People in a Hurry was there for 71 weeks. So there's, it, there's hope, and, and just to make it clear, that's if you're in a hurry, not in a hurry, okay? <laughs> just to be clear, in case there's any uncertainties about this. Also, um, the host, when I was invited to give a talk, they, there's a list of talks I could, topics I could talk about. This is the list. I'm not here to, really, I'm not here to sell you anything. And so they picked this one, uh, the top ten things you should know about the universe. So let's do this. Uh, so you, because I'm numbering them down, you know how far into the talk we are. Okay? <laughs> so you can, um, and the earlier numbers take me longer to get through. But just watch them count down, and that's how far away we are from finishing, okay? Uh, number 10, universe has a shipload of stars. <laughs> let's, let's see how that works. I'm gonna start out, we're all scientifically literate here. This is three ways of writing the number one. If there's a point to this, just, just stay seated while we go through this. Uh, the numeral one, 10 to the zero power, exponential notation, of course, and you can write out the number one. <clears throat> it's a very familiar number to us, requires no explanation. Uh, a thousand times bigger than that, we get to a thousand, 10 to the third power, metric prefix kilo. I'll have you know that, it, you, I'll remind you that the United States tried to completely convert to metric back in the 70s, and all they had to do was have kids talk to the local drug dealers, because they were all metric long before <laughs> anybody else was. Okay? Just the helos, we got this. Uh, the population of most cities are measured in the thousands. Multiply that by another factor of a thousand, we get to a million, ten to the sixth. Population of the big cities of the world, they're in a million, there's New York City, of course. We've got uh, Los Angeles, uh, Shanghai, Beijing. Uh, metric prefix mega. Remember when that was the prefix in computing? How many megabytes do you have? <laughs> mega was the thing. And it's so caught on did it that even the lottery says they call themselves mega millions. Well, they didn't keep up with the times. They could be giga millions, terra millions. But actually, mega millions would be millions of millions, which would be quadrillions of dollars, and that's not what they're giving. <laughs> so I was going to tweet about that, but. I get people angry when I tweet that way. <laughs> uh, another factor of a thousand, we get to a billion. Carl Sagan's favorite number, billion. Uh, population of the Earth is eight, we're pushing eight billion, probably hit that in a few years. Um, I have cash over here. First, uh, Ben Franklin, the only scientist on American currency, and that's not even why he's on the currency. We know this because there's no representation of his experiments anywhere on the bill. 
They could have put a kite with a key on it or something, a little lightning bolt, but no, he's on the money for being a founding father. So billions, we've got, I want to give you a sense of how big that number is. Uh, consider that Jeff Bezos, worth, I don't know, 100 billion, something like that, I think he passed that recently, 100 billion dollars, and so, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but if you take 100 billion dollars and lay them end to end, you can go around the earth 200 times. Then with what's left over, you can like point them upwards, stack them, I mean, you know, vertically upwards, and it'll go to the moon and back 10 times. That's Jeff Bezos' $100 billion. We've had other $100 billion uh, contenders. Uh, McDonald's. In fact, they had, you know, we had a Y2K problem? McDonald's had a $100 billion problem. There were no slots for three digits. They got stuck at 99 billion for many, many years. And then they, rather than fix that problem, they just gave up, and now they just all say, billions and billions, sir, <laughs> stop counting. Let's go up by another factor of a thousand. We get to a trillion. Prefix tera, that's more common today. We have terabyte drives. A trillion seconds ago, is when we had cave paintings, early uh, cave dwellers. That's about how long ago a trillion seconds was. And, okay, let's go up by another factor of a thousand. Oh, I didn't tell you, let's go back just for a sec. And get through a bill and get through his face. Okay, uh, is anyone here 31 years old? Raise your hand. A couple of, 31, good. In this year, you live your billionth second. Just thought I'd tell you that. Can you feel it? Yeah. Yeah, I celebrated my billionth second. A little tiny bottle of champagne because it, it doesn't last very long. Um, so what that means is, um, in principle, you could count to a billion, but you're never going to count to a trillion. Because a trillion will take you a thousand times longer than counting to a billion. So if you count it to a billion, counting one number every second since the moment you were born, you, you finish in your 31st year, you want to count to a trillion, it will take you 31,000 years. So that was a very long time ago, and you will never count to a trillion. And if you have kids, and you try to get them to stay out of trouble, just say, count to a trillion, and come back when you're done. <laughs> Another factor of a thousand, quadrillion, 10 to the 15th power, metric prefix peta. I think we're in a petabyte mode now, I think, uh, in many storage devices. Anyhow, this, 10 to the 15th power, this is about the estimate of the number of sounds and words ever uttered by all humans who have ever lived. That's this number. Let's go up by another factor of a thousand. Yeah, so we went from, I mean, you can sort of get the hang of this. We went from, from billion to trillion to quadrillion to quintillion, metric prefix exa, 10 to the 18th power. Each one of these, of course, is a thousand times larger than the number that came before it. Again, there's a point to all of this. Um, that's the estimated number of grains of sand on an average beach. Go to a beach and you come home and you're digging sand out of your. <laughs> I've included all of those grains of sand too. <laughs> Made it home in your butt crack. I've got them all. <laughs> Let's go by another factor of a thousand. We get to a sextillion metric prefix zeta, 10 to the 21st power. That is the estimated number of stars in the universe. And people say, oh yeah, we're alone in the universe. No, 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 I don't think so. Yeah, no, it's a star. Forget planets. Planets would be a number greater than this. We've got one average star called the sun and it's got eight, get over it, 
eight planets. Um, get me started. Not here and not now. Sextillion stars in the observable universe. Dwarfing all other numbers that you even care about and would ever use in your life. Universe is a shipload of stars. None. Universe is bad for your ego. You can't be an astrophysicist and have any ego whatsoever. All right? Let's just start off with, uh, we're going to go through all of these and show you how each of these is an assault on the human ego and hubris all the way down. So let's start off with life. Okay? Uh, this, believe it or not, is the very first ever drawn tree of life. It from Charles Darwin's notebook. And he connects diagrams, and there's a root base at the bottom, and he says, I think. Yeah, he got it right. When you're a humble scientist, you're not saying, all right, of course I'm. No, you, you just, you could be wrong. I just want to be sure. So, did this in 1837. The Origin of Species wouldn't be published uh, for 20 more years. We have a modern tree of life. It looks something like this. This is really cool. Uh, this is the 3,000 most successful species on Earth, physically written on the perimeter of this circle. The center of the circle is the beginning of Earth, four and a half billion years ago. Notice no line goes right to the middle, because as all of our evidence shows, it took a little while to get life going. Then life kicked in, the, the structure is very simple, and it doesn't really start branching out until much later. So the diversity of life has been growing ever since the beginning. And we have four main regions: plants in the upper right, and protists, and fungi, and animals. And so where are we? We are in the animal section, because that's what we are. Now here's something you can learn from this. You might not have known this. Animals and fungi, so mushrooms, have a later common ancestor than our common ancestor has with green plants. Which means we and mushrooms are more genetically related to one another than either of us are to green plants in this world. Now some people know this intuitively because they have Conversations with mushrooms. <laughs> relationship with mushrooms. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. But with diagrams like this, you, you learn facts about this. It's not we're here and mushrooms are there and all the other plants. No. We have a relationship with mushrooms that is separate from either of us and our relationship with plants. So we're in the animal section right there for people who came in late and are sitting in the back row. Let me just point you out here. So there we are. You know, if you go back, at, I, I know some old timers here. I see some silver here. So I, I'm about half gray, but I tinted it because it's, it's coming in in a mangy sort of way. It looks like I have some scalp disease. So one day when it's like all gray, I'll just come in all gray. But if, you, if, you, if you're gray haired, you may remember learning biology and the tree of life. And depending on how old your textbook was, it had humans at the top of the tree of life as some pinnacle of evolution. Excuse me. It had white humans at the top, <laughs> white male humans at the top, and everything else derived was lesser than that. This was how, again, this is human hubris, always putting ourselves at the top. Here you see where we fit in this, where, or where we don't fit, right? So here we are, homo sapiens, and in this diagram, as we zoom in, we are connected to life forms above us more recently than we are to life forms below us. So we'll come in, you'll, you'll miss this, but I'll show you that. All right, so here we go. We come back in, and there we go. You can start seeing Homo sapiens. There we go, Homo sapiens. Okay, so uh, now we know that our closest relative is the chimpanzee, but it's not here. How come? I actually already told you why not. How come the chips aren't on there? These are the most successful species. There's no room to put every species on here. 
So who's the most successful species closely related to us? Well, we're off to the right. Mus musculus. What is that? Mus musculus. Narwhals. No? Narwhals. Mice! It's mice! How about <laughs> Rattus norvegicus? Rats! Okay? Mice and rats! So, 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 that's why it's not an accident that you can do lab tests on mice and rats and have it relate back to who and what we are. Medicines, diets, health, physiology. That's not some accident. It's because we're connected, because we're related. And by the way, I don't know how geeky you are, but we got geeky people out there putting <laughs> stuff like that on their bodies. Yeah. yeah. This one wants to hurt. They didn't have to put all 3,000 species on this one. <laughs> you know, give me the Darwin one, and I'm good to go. That's life. So we're not really special. We're, we're, that's bad for your ego. I just showed you something that you're not at the top of the food chain or any kind of chain at all. Okay? How about Earth? Is Earth special? Well, Earth used to be special. It used to be the center of everything. Before science, really, we, our urges overrode any, any actual measurements of things. And so that was the sort of the geocentric universe. And those the sun is something lesser than us in orbit around us. But when you really get down to it, there's the sun, a close-up on a sunspot, and uh, that's about the size of the Earth relative to a sunspot. So we are not even as big as the sun's pimples. Okay? <laughs> Just to get a sense of that. And in my field, we, we really call things as we see them. That's a spot on the sun. Its official name is sunspot. <laughs> That's how we roll. We are simple people in, in astrophysics. So, Earth. You're not, it's not Earth. Earth. You, you can pour a million Earths into the sun and still have room left over. So, Earth is not even big or important. How about the solar system? The whole solar system. Well, here's a beautiful shot of Saturn seen by Cassini eclipsing the sun. So you get this glow around the ball. That's sunlight peering through the rarefied outer atmosphere of the ball. And the rings lit from the underside, so they have this eerie view. Okay? So where are we in the sun? It turns out this picture was taken at the right time, in the right sun angle, to show you Earth. <laughs> Nine pixels. Earth. Earth. Yeah, we're not, we're not even in the solar system. We're not. Okay, how about, how about the galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy? All right, this is not the Milky Way galaxy, but it's a nearby one that kind of looks like ours. So let's imagine this is our galaxy. Where are we? Are we in the center? Are we? No, so we are, we're like over it, just in the suburb somewhere. <laughs> An undistinguished outer arm of the galaxy. Well, how about, okay, how about the universe? The whole universe. Oh. Oh, it just occurred to me. Uh, the organizers, do you guys know I have audio coming through this? Do we have a, can you take audio through the HDMI? Or do you need a separate plug for that? We have like a secret black box to, you have to put in the request. We have audio coming out. <laughs> yeah. So, how about the universe? Well, okay, this is a shot taken by the Hubble telescope uh, of a tiny patch of the sky. And what we did, we looked, we said, where's the most boring part of the night sky? And we found it. And then we took a picture and a really long exposure to get the dimmest things to show up. And apart, apart from some stars that are sitting on our noses, like this one right here with the spikies, and another one high up above here, and I think there's one over, yeah, there's one over here, like right above that. Oh, just cool, I, since I'm on this, what happens if I like, point to something like here? Now, come on, come on down to me. Come on down. 
<laughs> oh, you're dimming me out. Totally. <laughs> Very clever. Very clever. <laughs> so, uh, point is, those stars are sitting on our noses in our own galaxy. Every other bit of light you see in this picture is an entire other galaxy scattered across the universe, commensurate with the Milky Way, containing hundreds of billions of stars. So our galaxy, so I can pretend we're not actually in this picture, but if we were, this is what we'd look like. Yeah, there you go. Okay? There we go. Just one in the crowd. Lost in the din of cosmic noise. Well, how about that the universe? Maybe the universe is special. Maybe there's one universe. Now it's latest, and maybe we're not. Okay? There's strong theoretical proclivities to suggest that we live in a multiverse rather than a universe. And in a multiverse, our universe is but one expanding bubble of some countless number of expanding bubbles, possibly infinite. This is where you get the idea that if there's an infinite number of universes, there's some place where your molecules are assembled so that you, you know, you, all this is happening except I am female, okay? Or I'm whatever. So some, everything's identical, but some little thing is different. There's this, this, is, this is asserted, but you need like an infinite number of universes for that to happen. There could be an infinite, but all we can say for the moment is that there are likely very many more than one, which then reduces our, our, um, reduces our uniqueness in the universe, if uniqueness mattered to you. So we would be like right there. Okay? You, in this case, is our entire universe. Okay. What's the verdict on the sound? Do we have a... Is it going through the HTML? It's not much now, I mean, but it'd be nice to know. If... You know what I could do? I just put the microphone on. That way, I don't need the sound. We'll just do it off the computer. <laughs> yeah, we got this. I got this. Let me make sure the sound is... Oh. Get to see my backdrop there. That's cool. Let's make sure the sound output is my computer. And then we do. Yep. Yeah, what's going through the HDMI? But you don't have speakers, I guess. Okay, that's fine. Built in. Uh, okay, we good. Okay. So, uh, that's the multiverse. So, how about the simulaverse? verse? I don't know if that word exists, but I'm using it here and now, okay? <laughs> it's just been invented, if you haven't seen it. So, maybe, not only is life not, human life not differently interesting on Earth, and Earth is not, and souls are not, and galaxies are not, but maybe all of this is just some simulation, and I wish so badly that I had a good argument to tell you no. I wish I had an argument, but I don't. But I don't. You go back to the 90s, Nick Bostrom, a philosopher, proposed the following question. As computing power gets more, gets greater, and our ability to simulate a world becomes more refined, more intricate, maybe whatever we simulate, if it has some illusion of free will, will decide that it wants to run a simulation and invent computers to do so. And maybe what it simulates will want to then have a simulation, and then it simulations all the way down. If that's the case, step back and ask, how many universes are in front of us? There's the one real universe in which there's a simulation out of which a simulation created a simulation created a simulation. If you throw a dart at all of these universes, what are the chances you're going to be in the one real universe? probabilistically, we're going to be in one that's been simulated by some more intelligent species than we are. Some kid in a parent's basement. <laughs> I wish I had an argument against that. Uh, Max Tegmark, a colleague of mine, uh, took this a step further. Just imagine, if everything in the universe can be described by math, it was basically a 
case, then what's to prevent everything that's going on around us from having been mathematically established by some other creature? Could you test this? You could maybe by testing the limits of the laws of physics. Because someone is putting in parameters, they're not going to put in infinities, they've got to put some limit. Maybe as we test the laws of physics, there's some parameter that should go beyond some limit and does not. This is like in the Truman Show, where he sails out to the edge of the bubble, and there's a bu edge of the bubble. You stay far enough in the center, you don't even know. Not much different from the matrix. <coughs> matrix one. <laughs> Agree on that one? Total agreement. Okay. So, uh, I want to sort of play some Mario for you. This is, I think, Mario Galaxy. And just imagine you are a scientist in this game. Just imagine that. So, you're going to want to analyze things that are happening. So, let's see. See if I can do both here. Hang on. Get this. Sound output. Internal speakers. Yeah, I got that. I'm there. Oh, you're gonna fix it. He's gonna he's gonna try something. Okay. Uh, we don't need Mario sound because you know what it sounds like anyway. Uh, well, I'll describe it for you. So here we go. So here's Mario. He's floating up, and I'm a scientist observing this. They say, oh, if there's a ramp, he can now go sideways. So gravity vectors can change. Okay, coins disappear, become puffs of, of smoke, and money gets accumulated. Now, gravity vector changes again. So I look at the conditions under which this is happening, and I write my rule book for the laws of physics. Now, when you're done with all the coins, oh, you missed one, now I can, well, you gotta get that one, go back. Okay. Well, okay, so now you go back, now you can jump upwards. Here he goes. Jumps up. That's possible. He appears. He's on some planet. He can propel through the vacuum of space and not die. <laughs> Land on a planet with one palm tree. Okay? And run around and do triple flips. So I'd be writing all this down. What that's what we do now as scientists. Something falls off a cliff, I study that motion. Look at how fast it accumulates speed. That would be its acceleration. Mario jumps off a cliff face and then scurries and jumps back. That's a law of physics in this game. If you are in this game and you're a scientist and you've been programmed to have some illusion of free will, you will just decode all the laws of physics of this universe. And you won't even know that you were programmed as clearly Mario does not. Oh, you think we got it? I can do that. Oh, take it out of the instrument I I can do that. I think I can do that. Oops. Yeah. Um, the headphone jack. Yeah, I'll go. That should work. Right? Okay, should. Should. Let's see. Should. You got volume on your side? Okay. They're getting there, they're working through. Okay, that's fine. So, I'm just saying, if we're in a universe, how would you even know? <laughs> There's your mind. <laughs> Keep giving it to me. There you go. Okay. Down to eight. Universe is like a time machine. A time machine. Okay. Uh, let's, let's take the Hubble telescope. By the way, this is the size of a Greyhound bus orbiting the Earth. If you never knew how big the Hubble telescope is. It's still operational. Had some glitches a few weeks ago. 